Remember the orchid mantis we photographed in the last video? Well in this video I'm going to take the images from that photo shoot and enhance them in Lightroom and Photoshop. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here and you're into photography, particularly macro photography is the subject we're covering at the moment and anything to do with that, then click the subscribe button, click the bell icon to get notified of new videos because we're going to be doing a lot of that this year. Now in this video, like I said on the intro, we're going to take the image that we took of our orchid mantis and we're going to take them into Lightroom, do some enhancements and then take them into Photoshop to do some corrections. But first of all, we are in Lightroom and the first thing I need to do is pick the image that I like. So I'm going to come over to my photographing an orchid mantis. This is the file structure I use. I, I, I um, file them by the year, um, the month and then the, uh, the actual project. So in this case it's 2018, April, photographing an orchid mantis. And then we have images and raw and we have 48 images in here that we want to um, filter down to just one i like to use just one image from each photo shoot that way i have different styles of images in my portfolio instead of having like five of the same type all from the same shoot this first thing i like to do is i'm just going to come in here i'm going to select all of the images and then press p to pick them I can then come to filters and pick the flag for, um, to filter the images out for the flags. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm not that good at Lightroom. I've only started using it this year because it comes with the photography plan with from Adobe with the, uh, the Creative Cloud. I don't really know how to use for Lightroom so I'm just using it to organize my pictures. So I, because I've done that what I can do now is when I click on an image, I can click uh, or press the X key to eliminate that image from the group. Now it's not deleted, it's merely not showing up because we have the filter uh, selected to flagged. Anything that's not flagged, which the X key, uh, X key will do, or unflag it, anything that's not flagged will not show up. Okay, so these ones here, these were our test um, shots. And what I'm looking for are images where the mantis is looking at the camera. Okay, that one's okay. So let's have a look here. I prefer the second image. And this one was the one where the background um, failed because it was too far away from the mantis. Now we have great detail on the mantis, but I don't like the background. So we will not use that one. And what I'm looking for again is the mantis to be looking at the camera and to be in focus. And you can see there how I'm just moving left and right to check the images to see which one I prefer for the first one out of that particular set. Okay, so we've nailed it down to six images that we want to use. Um, the last two I would, if I wanted to, to create the image out of there, I would take the head from the one image and place it onto the body of the second image. But we're not dealing with compositing in this video. If you want to see a video about I will take these two images and merge them together to create one image that is perfect, then leave me a comment down below and I'll see about putting that video together. But for this video, we will reject those two. Three, sorry, there was three there. Um, and we will work on these images. Um, okay, so I've already used this image on a thumbnail for the uh, the previous video, so we're going to reject that one. Now these two, I prefer this one, so we'll reject that one. 
and then we filtered it down to just one image. Now this is generally what I do on my shoots. You can have 100 or 200 images and for each subject I will narrow it down to just one um, picture of each one. So first of all what we want to do is come over to our um, basic adjustments. Now I'm not going to touch exposure because I will do that last. Contrast I'm going to bring it up a little bit and highlights if you want to know what these buttons are going to do well these sliders will do just move them left and right and you'll be able to see the effect now what i want to do is try and bring out the detail in his body no, i don't want to darken the background so i'll leave that at zero i'm going to leave the whites as well zero Bring the blacks down just a little bit because I'm just want to try and get the detail out in his body. Now that we've done that, we can bring the exposure up a little bit, not too much because we don't want the um, the mantis to be overexposed. Clarity. Let's deal with that now. I've seen so many people online where they take the clarity button, the little slider, and they will put up to 100. Okay. Now the problem is this. You can see a dark halo around our insect in some cases it's a white halo now i've seen loads of images online particularly facebook where someone's overdone one of the sliders and created a halo don't do it because it just looks awful okay so for the for the clarity i'm going to bring it up to maybe plus 10. vibrant will put up to 20 and we'll also increase the saturation because we're doing macro images of insects if you look at them online you'll find that a lot of the images have a lot of saturation pumped into them because the insects have bright colors and you want to over exaggerate that a little bit that's what we're doing here okay let's come down to here uh, we have the detail this is the next thing I will do is sharpening now I will leave the sharpening at 25 I'm going to leave it at default but what I will adjust is the masking now if we hold down the alt key while we click on this slider you'll see that we get a mask and what I want to do here is I want to move the slider to the right hand side until the background is black and it's roughly around 50 now because the background is black the uh, the the sharpening will not affect the background only the insect it will only affect the areas that are white that's that done noise reduction i am going to do a little bit of noise reduction maybe at 25 will match the sharpening amount okay that's done uh, lens correction i am going to enable remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction now if we turn those two on and off you will see that there's a slight correction in the pixels and the vignette has now been removed and there's one more slider i want to have a look at uh, i believe it's in effects that's d haze and we can slide this up and down to see what this does and it can give an interesting effect and i'm going to put that at plus around plus 30. If we turn that on and off, you'll see there how uh, we've made the insect come out from the background just a little bit more. Okay. Oh, what did I click there? There we go. Uh, no, stay there. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to use Lightroom as you can clearly see. Anyway, now that we've got that done, that is it's roughly where I want it. We're going to come up to um, Photo, Edit in and Adobe Photoshop. So what we've done so far is we've corrected uh, slight exposure, we've added a little bit of detail and we've adjusted the colours. What I want to do now is to focus on the main issue that I'm having with this particular image. And what that main issue is, is these uh, points that are in focus. But before we do that, let's do some cropping. Now, important when we select the crop tool is to make sure you have delete cropped pixel unticked okay if you tick it and crop it you're going to lose your pixels so you don't want to do that the second thing you don't want to do is to do this 
But you bring this all the way in and go, wow, that's an awesome blocked image. Look how big that insect is. It will look great on Facebook. However, if we zoom into 100%, you can see now that we have over exaggerated the, uh, the grain and the noise in the image because effectively what we're doing is blowing up the image and that increases the size of the, na uh, of the, uh, the grain and the noise. And we don't want to do that. I'm just going to undo that and I'll come back to the crop tool and I'm just going to crop it in just a little bit until the uh, the top rule of third line is on his eye. I'm then going to move it over very slightly to about there. Okay, now basically what I want to do is I want some negative space over the left hand side, which is where he's looking. And what I want to do is, from my days of doing matte paintings, I want to flip this image. Okay, I'm going to flip that image. I'm then going to move it over a little bit. The reason I've done that is I think it reads better because I read naturally from left to right. This image now reads a little bit better from left to right. We're going from the left top corner down and looping over. And it just reads just a little bit better in my mind, okay? So for this next part, I'm going to need my rack on. Move the mouse out the way. And what I want to do is evaluate the... Um, Why is my Wacom not working? What I want to do now is I want to evaluate the image and I'll show you the process I do for that. I'm going to create a new layer. What is going on here? It's like the interface is completely locked up and I can't do nothing. Oh my god, look at this. Every time I switch the Wacom on, it's locking. Now that I've flipped the uh, image, I'm going to put some guides down. Now to put guides down, you want to come to view, new guide, and you want to do 33.3%, 50%, and 66.6% .6 on the vertical and horizontal uh, lines. But I've created an action for that, which saves a lot of time. There you go. Now because we didn't delete the pixels when we cropped the image, we can move this around and I'm going to, and I'm just going to put him about there. So we have an eye on a rule of third and we have a leaf that is quite close to a rule of third. Okay. Let's hide those guides. We don't need to use them anymore. Now what, what I want to do now is I want to evaluate the image. And by that, um, I mean, I want to show you what I don't like, what I do like. To do that, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to grab my, um, my brush tool and I'm just going to create a green color and a red color okay so what we like here then is we like the background blur that's nice we like the blur here and we like the sharpness on uh, the mantis what we don't like is I don't like this area here that is in focus and this area here that is in focus. I don't like those areas. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a blur to this um, mantis. So let's rename him. Orchid mantis. I'm going to copy this layer by we can do control J or we can drag it down to a new layer. That will give us a new copy. I'm going to call it Blur. And normally I would use Smart Objects, but um, the filter we want to use can't be used as a Smart Object. Don't know why, it just can't. I'm going to come to Filter, uh, Blur and Lens Blur. For some reason you can't use the Lens Blur on a Smart Object. I have no idea why, but anyway. These are the settings I'm going to use. Um, I've never changed these settings in all the times I've been doing this. So, just use the same settings. 
Now that we've done that, we want to remove the blur from the mantis, so we're going to apply a layer mask. We're going to paint in a soft brush. Now at this point, I would take my Wacom tablet and start drawing in or painting in where I want this effect to not appear. Unfortunately, I can't do that on this video because I've just updated Windows to the Spring Creators update. Now every time I turn my Wacom tablet on, Photoshop interface is locking up. Photoshop itself doesn't lock up, but the interface locks up. I can't click any buttons or anything on there. I don't know why. I haven't had time to figure it out because I want to get this video done first. So we will skip the Wacom tablet, okay? And um, what we will do is we will use our mouse to do this effect. So with my um, with the blur layer selected, make sure we're painting in black. We're going to just reveal our praying mantis. But we're only going to reveal the head and body. We're not going to do the feet. We're going to leave those blurred. And I'm not going to do that part there. We'll leave that blurred as well. That way we're focusing the, uh, the focus onto the head. Now, that you would call done if you're going to upload it to Facebook. However, if you want to print this out, there's one more step we need to do just to make it better. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to demonstrate this, but because it's a screen recording, you might not be able to see what I'm talking about. But if I come down, if I zoom in here, you can see that, um, let me get rid of this, put a new layer on. Right. So you can see here that we have noise in the image. However, over here, we don't. And that's because we've blurred the image and by blurring it, we've removed the noise. Now, if we print this out, you'll see noise or film grain in the sharp areas of the image, but not on the blurred area. So let's fix that now. What we need to do is create a new layer. We're going to fill this with 50% gray and select our blend mode to soft light. When you select soft light, it removes any gray in the image and anything that's dark will darken the image. Anything that's lighter will lighten the image. We're going to create a smart object so that we can edit this effect afterwards if need be. We're going to come to filter, noise, add noise, and we're going to add 1% noise. Now, I really hope you can see this, but that has now added noise into this area of the image. Over here is our original, and that's the noise. We're almost done. The only problem we got is the noise is smaller than the noise that's on the original image. So to fix that, again, I'm going to come over here, right click and convert to a new smart object. This keeps everything intact if we need to go in and edit it later. And then I'm going to press uh, Control T to free transform, or you can come to edit and free transform. And we're going to increase the size of this layer to 150%. To stop this effect from being added to our existing noise, we need to create a clipping mask by holding the Alt key down, coming in between the two layers and clicking. So there is our Prime Mantis, almost done. There's one more step, there's always one more step. Now, if you want to post this to Facebook, um, there's a step that we have to know. We've taken it from Lightroom into Photoshop. However, have you ever noticed or ever come across when you post them on Facebook, your image looks dark? flat just doesn't look like it did when you had it in photoshop this is why we have the wrong profile selected for posting out to facebook or any type of web based interface we come to edit and come to convert to profile you can see our current color space is pro photo rgb that does not work on any type of website okay so before we do anything, we need to convert it to an sRGB. You can convert it to Adobe sRGB. I like to convert it to the uh, the, the sRGB, um, i.e. whatever. That's the one I convert it to, okay. We'll convert that. You'll see no change in Photoshop, because Photoshop is very good at converting the images. But now if I upload this to Facebook, 
the images will be perfectly the same as they are on here and they won't be washed out or it usually comes out dark and flat but that will fix that problem and there is our our image done so there you go that is how i quickly enhance my macro shots using lightroom and photoshop i hope you found something useful in this um this video give it a thumbs up if you did thumbs down if you didn't give me a comment uh, a like and a share if you did enjoy it if you have any suggestions or uh, tips for me particularly in lightroom leave them down below and i'll um i'll read through those i'll read through every comment that i get uh, as much as possible i'll try to reply to them as well but for now that's it for this video my name is Stuart wood thank you for watching this video and i will see you on the next one